So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be looking at limits at infinity. So remember the expression limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l says that, as, says that the values of f of x approach l as x gets closer and closer to a. But a is a real number. We can also look at limits as x approaches infinity of f of x. And if this equals L, that's saying something about the long-term behavior of F as you go off to the, to the right of the graph. We could also look at negative infinity, in which case you're going to the left. But this is something that I hope is already familiar, because this is just another way of talking about horizontal asymptotes. So if we have a graph like this, with two horizontal asymptotes, something like this, and then maybe something like this, the limit, and let's, oh, let's make this um, 3, and let's make this negative 2. The limit as you go to positive infinity is 3, right, because we have a horizontal asymptote here. And the limit as we go to negative infinity is negative 2, because we have a horizontal asymptote here. So this, I hope, isn't a new idea. It's just a new way of expressing something you've already seen. Let's look at an example. Let's find the limit as x approaches infinity of 6x squared minus 4x plus 5 all over 11x squared plus 20x minus 8. So this is a rational function, and we can talk about whether or not there are horizontal asymptotes. To compute this limit, though, we're going to have to rewrite this because we have something in the numerator going to infinity, right? This is a quadratic. It's going to infinity um, as x goes to infinity. Likewise, the denominator is going to infinity. So what we're going to do first is multiply both the top and the bottom by 1 over x squared. So we have 1 over x squared times the top and 1 over x squared times the bottom. And what do we get? This is the limit as x approaches infinity. Now we have 6x squared times 1 over x squared, so the x squareds cancel, and we're left with 6. Then we have minus 4x divided by x squared, so, we're, so we get uh, minus 4 over x, and then plus 5 over x squared. Now we do the same thing to the denominator, we end up with 11x squared over x squared, so that we just get 11, plus 20 divided by x minus 8 divided by x squared. Now we have a limit that we can evaluate. We have to, to do this uh, really thoroughly, we have to apply some limit laws. We'll apply one of them here, which is that if you have the limit of a ratio and each, and, and the numerator and the denominator limits both exist, then the limit of that ratio is the ratio of the limits. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 6 minus 4 over x plus 5 over x squared. That whole thing divided by the limit as x approaches infinity of 11 plus 20 over x minus 8 over x squared. Now it's really important to notice that we can do this at this stage because the numerator and the denominator in this modified form, both, uh, the limits both exist. In the original form, forget about what we multiplied by, these limits didn't exist. We had a limit, the numerator going to infinity and the denominator going to infinity. So we get the ratio of the limits, and now if we wanted to be really thorough, we would say the limit of this expression is the limit of the first one minus the limit of the second one plus the limit of the third one. But what happens when you do that? This 4 over x, as x goes to infinity, that goes to 0. 5 over x squared similarly goes to 0. Let's look at the denominator. 20 over x goes to 0. 8 over x squared goes to 0. All we're left with is 6 over 11. Now, it's not a coincidence that it's the ratio of the leading coefficients. And you'll see, if you do these enough, 
whenever you have a ratio of polynomials and the leading, uh, the leading terms have the same power, right here it's both two, then the limit is just the ratio of the leading coefficients. Let's look at another example. So let's look at the limit as x approaches infinity of almost the last one, but instead of 6x squared, let's just have 6x. And now plus 5 all over that same denominator. So 11x squared plus 20x minus 8. Once again, we can't split this limit of a ratio into a ratio of limits because the numerator and the denominator both independently go to infinity. So we're going to have to do the same trick again. But now, instead of multiplying by 1 over x squared, we'll just cancel this x. So let's multiply this by 1 over x all over 1 over x. So what happens? We get the limit as x approaches infinity of 6. So it's 6x times 1 over x, so the x is cancel, plus 5 over x and divided by 11x, right? so 11x squared over x is 11x, plus 20 minus 8 over x. Now we have something that in the numerator approaches 6. Right? This thing goes to 0. But in the denominator, we have this 11x term. This is going to infinity. So we have something that's going to 6 divided by something that's going to infinity. So this limit is 0. You can actually think of this as following the same pattern as before. If you think of there being something like a 0x squared term in the numerator. So think of the numerator as 0x squared plus 6x plus 5. And you can think of this answer as the leading term, this 0 over 11. You don't have to, but it's, it's nice to be able to see that. Let's do one more example. Let's look at the limit as x approaches infinity of our original numerator. So 6x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now in the, in the denominator, let's put 11x minus 8. So here, we'll want to cancel this x. So we'll again multiply by 1 over x over 1 over x. And we get the limit as x approaches infinity of 6x minus 4 plus 5 over x. Right? Divide each term here by x in the numerator. All over 11 minus 8 over x. Now we have what we saw before, only the roles are reversed. The thing in the denominator is going to a constant, namely 11 and the thing in the numerator is going to infinity. So this limit is equal to infinity. That means that the limit doesn't really exist. But this is a special kind of does not exist. And we usually say that this limit is equal to infinity. So those are some examples of computing limits at infinity.